Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast. Today, we have the privilege of having Todd Bickerton here with us today. Todd, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Umar. So, Todd, how long have you been a realtor? About nine years now, Umar. What made you decide to enter this industry? Um, Well, it goes back to the 40s. My grandfather started a real estate company here, uh, and it was insurance as well. And through a big part of my life, I was in the insurance business, Mm -hmm. about 19 years of it. But uh, we sold that and uh, took some time off and uh, then got into real estate. I've always wanted to do it. So I was talked out of it when I was 18, and I wish I hadn't have been. What's kind of interesting is uh, the hardest part of real estate for a lot of people is the sales component. Right. Like once somebody says yes, oh, many people are proficient at, you know, helping them find a house or helping them sell their house, but it's getting people to say yes. And that's where I guess that uh, foundational experience of being in insurance probably really helped. Yeah, it certainly helped. You know what? You, you look at all the things that you could have done differently, but all the things that led me up to this point have helped. So it's a good thing. I'm a firm believer in useful lies. For example, people say, you know, all your experiences so far led you to this moment in life, which is absolutely true. Uh, Was it a cosmic design? I'm not sure, but it's really kind of interesting if you don't see what happened in the past as a waste, but see it as a resource of how you can apply it today to build what you want. Thoughts? Yeah, well, exactly. Like, uh, you know, you look at relationships, you look at anything. And if nothing else in sales, I always think of this job as more of a psychological uh, psychology degree that would probably be helpful as a background. Absolutely. For sure. Uh, understanding in people's intentions are a big, big part of it. Just like you said, how do you get them to say yes? So we'll come back to that in a minute. And then the other half of it is... In our society, we have uh, beliefs in a gazillion areas, but there's some common areas. One is beliefs around money, and most people have bad beliefs around money. A lot of people think, you know, money causes problems. It's not the causes fights. You'll turn into an asshole if you have too much of it, and all that stuff that is not true. You might, but probably not. The second area is in selling. A lot of people are like, hey, I'm not a salesperson. I don't like to be sold. He's too salesy. But <laughs> No idea in the world has ever taken off unless somebody sold it. And some of the best salespeople I've ever met are three years old. They know which parent to go to and how to ask to get what they want. And somehow we lose that. And uh, so those two areas, the selling and money and then self-worth, how we see ourselves. Most people don't see themselves as amazing as they are. They see themselves as less than, and some people dramatically so, but some people is like, oh, well, you know, I feel like an imposter, even people that are incredibly successful. So we need psychology before our clients do. Thoughts? That's pretty deep, <laughs> but it's true. You know, like you got to know yourself. And I was just thinking back to you saying that somehow you lose that ability when you're a three-year-old. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't know what it is, how life just kind of knocks you down a little bit and, and you get afraid to do stuff. But uh, it, certainly to, to be successful, I think you got to really just get yourself out there. But you have to have the confidence for sure. Absolutely. I think confidence is, uh, you know, uh, if you want to be sexy, be confident. Doesn't matter what you look like. I like reading a lot of books and I had read this book by Donna Karen. I'm not a fashion guy, but I figured, you know, hey, here's somebody that's got a brand that's international. I'll read the book. And there was this one scene that she had in her book that uh, I literally saw it visually. She said she was at in Palm Springs at this super high-end resort. We go to, you know, get spas and diets and stuff. And she's sitting uh, by the pool. And this woman walks across the pool and she's a plus size woman. So not a traditional beauty. And the way she described it, Donna Karen, was that every single guy looked at her and wanted her and every single woman hated her. And she said (laughs) it was the way she carried herself with such confidence. Like she just said, I am sexy and that's all you believed. So how you show up is it's really powerful, right? 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, it's very true. So let's go to the psychology of uh, homeowners and home buyers. If it was one person doing it, it is complicated enough. But usually you have uh, a spouse and then you have their parents and then <laughs> may or may not the kids get involved. But there is a whole dynamic there that has to be dealt with. So tell me about one of those times where you actually had to be a psychiatrist to figure out what they really wanted to kind of get everybody to get clarity because people have their ideas and sometimes they think they're on the same page when they're very much not. So can you tell us about an example where you had one of those we had to like uh, get everybody on the same page? Oh, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. So uh, around here, we're in like cottage country, waterfront, uh, all kinds of different things. But people will always have these different ideas of what they're looking for. And, and uh, it, it's hard sometimes that the guy's expectations are way out here and the lady's expectations are way out here. And I'm being generalized with that kind of a, a couple setup um, to get them to meet in the middle where what they're looking for actually exists takes a little time sometimes and uh, listening I think is the biggest part of it to just sit there and maybe try to to get a little bit of time with each individual person mm -hmm. walking around the property just to hear how, what they're talking about and things that they would like um, that's easier than trying to talk to the two of them together because trying to talk to two people together nobody will tell the absolute truth but if you get them if you get them separated um, genius. That's a lot it. easier. And one of the most powerful questions for me, at least, is how will you know you found the right property? Not what you're looking for. What you're looking for opens up a different filing cabinet. Right. Oh, this, 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 this. And when you say, yeah. how will you know you found it? Then all of a sudden they have to think about it and go, huh, I'll know when. I see this, this is going on, that's going on, and you get closer to the truth. And one of the nice things about that question is that you give the person who's articulating it insights into what the hell they want in the first place, because they've never thought about it in that uh, fashion. Right. So that's where you come into the sales aspect of it, right? In a big way. So if, if I'm looking at it and I've got a couple that's looking, the guy's looking in one place because he loves the garage. The garage is amazing. And the lady is looking at a house and she loves it because of the bedroom set up for the children. Mm -hmm. Um, but that particular house is just a disaster and not what they need at all because it's never going to work well. But you know the property that they need. They've dismissed it. You just have to find a way to incorporate that into how you're going to show it to them and take them there, maybe take them there when they don't have the kids with them and just say, listen, we're walking through this. We're going through this. Take a look at this. Not say anything. Just say, I know you didn't want to see it, but come take a look at this. Let them have some time, filter through it. And then maybe if you get a chance, if it's more about what's going to work for the kids, bring the kids next time. Let's go for a second show and take the kids with them. And then just let the kids run and see what the kids do. So that's genius on a couple of uh, levels. Number one, uh, there's this thing called systems theory. And system theory says that if it's you and the homeowner and the spouse and one of the parents, it'll be a different experience if that parent wasn't there. So just bringing them back, seeing it themselves uh, creates a whole new experience. And then having the kids and letting them see where they run to, I think is totally genius. That's the aspect of the business that I enjoy. I, um, I really enjoy being able to talk to people for sure but getting inside their heads and figuring out what they really want. And then finally getting them settled into the right home. That, that feels nice. One of the stories I heard from uh, one of my clients was uh, it was one of the early years deals that he did. And it was a hard deal to close. And at the closing, the wife comes up to him and hugs him and says, we wanted to go for the cheaper house, but you forced us to go for this house. And I just want to say, Thank you, thank you, thank you for being there and get helping us get our dream home. And that's what a realtor does: is you help them get insights and help them get what they really want, as opposed to what they think they want. And sometimes it's a lesser house. Yeah, yeah. And it's important too. Like here, like I said we're cottage country, so it's important to know the ins and outs of where you're trading in real estate. I, like I don't go too far out of our general trading area because I don't know enough about it. And right. somebody who lives there does, so you can find a referral source there. Um, but if you know your specific area, you know all the different things about, like if you're looking at waterfront, like currents, um, you know, water depth, uh, 
if you're selling a place in the middle of January, somebody's like, well, the other realtor told me that there's not weeds here. And you'd be like, well, I've lived here for 40 odd years. There's weeds there all the time. So, <laughs> you know, you know, those things and uh, it's a bit of a tangent, but I think that's the important part is, is um, know your area and stick to it. Brilliant. And the other part is uh, what percentage of the homes that you sell are second homes versus people actually moving there to retire or whatever? Mm-hmm. Good question. Um, I would say maybe about 20% of them. 20%? And yeah. uh, is it just you and, or do you have a team? Yeah. So right now uh, I've got a wonderful team. Uh, I've got two uh, young women working with me and uh, they're both, uh, one's an executive assistant, one's a marketing assistant. And they're both learning in the, the whole real estate world. They're going up and nice. getting licenses and stuff. So yeah, it's fantastic. And we're looking on bringing other, other agents on as well. So it's, it's nice. It's good. So what kind of vibe do you want to this place once you've got uh, a few agents and uh, you know, some admin staff you've already got? Uh, right. What's the vibe you want your clients to feel when they come there? Yeah, well, we're pretty laid back. Uh, I'll have to take you on a tour of the office here, but it's, uh, you know, the, the whole main office is a couple big, three big couches. Um, it's set up. It looks like a cottage. Nice. That's what you're selling. That's what you're showing. That's, that's it. It's a real comfy atmosphere. And uh, we've had uh, had some good parties here. We just had a really good party here. And now you're telling me. Yeah, Darn yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. But it, 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 what I wanted this place to feel like is you walk into a small town barber shop. You can come in, sit down, have a drink, talk, uh, gossip, you know, share ideas, stuff like that. That's exactly what we wanted here. Oh, and, I love uh, that, and that's a really yeah, good visual. That's coming together. So I was in uh, Fremont, California. I used to live in the States for a long time. Okay. And uh, so it was a place I was going by. It was a barber shop. So I go in and there's a Mexican barber there. And it's like 1030 in the morning. There's two guys sitting on the shoe shine kind of station. They're just reading papers. They're not getting a shoe shine. There's some other people hanging around. And the barber's cutting my hair. And he is very drunk at 1030, 11 o'clock in the morning <laughs> with very sharp scissors going, freaking gringos they're always trying to get you it's like i'm thinking oh my god i'm gonna die here on this thing but no that vibe of a town small town barbershop is is a really good one to get and that's something people would understand uh, easily yeah well i've been in like listen i've been in all kinds of different offices as i'm sure you have too and the last thing i wanted was to anybody to feel you know like oh god we shouldn't be in here um it's a rarity today. I, my dog isn't with me, um, but he's usually here. Big golden retriever. He comes to work. Uh, Brianna, one of my assistants, she just had her cat here. Um, you know, it, it's a friendly thing, right? People will pop, poke their head in the door just to see the animals and nice and talking. And we'll meet people from all over the world. It's great. Brilliant. By the way, my sister says that uh, she has a golden retriever too, and she calls him a liar. She says yeah. not once has he retrieved gold. It's like <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah yeah he's uh he's worth his weight in gold that boy though he's he's nice. been he's been my buddy buddy through all this what's kind of interesting is uh the only entities that are inhuman are humans and dogs teach you more about love and animals teach you more about love than humans do it's been my oh, yeah. experience yeah yeah what's that they don't they don't have to be there for here for as long because they already get it right yeah that's... they already know Brilliant. So as you move forward and you're expanding your uh, company, Mm -hmm. how does that change your role? Mm. Well, one of the things I wanted to bring on um, Rihanna and Caden into the business is because I I feel fulfilled if I can mentor somebody and help get them started and grow up and and into the business because I I think I'm still young in this, but I'm not going to be young forever. And so you got to have you, know, you got to have a buildup of new people behind you that want to keep going and to be there to help you. And, uh, you know, when they get set up and get, become successful, then we'll get somebody else in right behind and, and start training them and just have that perpetual motion and, and keep it running. I was, uh, I did a podcast with this gentleman, uh, Conrad, and they started their real estate practice with uh, five realtors and now they have a thousand. Wow. And uh, just the vibe in that place is so amazing because there's like a focus and caring and it's all about family, even with that many people. And I'd ask, you know, like, uh, what was that like? It was like uh, hardest was getting over a hundred. It says, you know, (laughs) 
I can getting see up to 80 was easy. And then like, getting over a hundred was like the most difficult thing ever. And then after that, it was just accelerate. But the thing I liked about it was just really caring about the agents, caring about the clients still is very much uh, the number one most important thing for them, which is nice. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, anything in sales, you could have somebody that could sell, you know, you hear, you know, that person could sell anything to anybody, but you have to be able to sell somebody something and feel good about it because they're going to be your they return. Need, they want, absolutely. Yeah. That, that's where, you know, you're going to, they're going to tell your friend, their friends, they're going to do this. They're going to do that. If you treat somebody badly, that goes around way faster. Especially like in your neck of the woods, I would imagine, but anywhere. Oh, yeah. So are you part of a brokerage? Yes, part of Sotheby's, Sotheby's International Realty Canada. So yeah, we're, we're, we're a branch office of Toronto here, um, which is amazing. And, you know, they, they've got such a network and they've got so many things that they bring to the table. Nice. Um, so in a small town, we feel very fortunate to have that backing. Brilliant. And is there like a head office for Sotheby's in Toronto? Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. On Young Street. And so... Um, you know, but we've of course done everything virtually for the last number of years anyway, but uh, it is nice to, to get to see people. And I'm, I'm hoping this year we get to go up to the, maybe the Christmas party and. Oh yeah. And to bring, to your dog. Dog. bring your damn yeah. dog for sure. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, do you know why uh, we had COVID? Uh, this is my personal theory. It was the guy that heads up zoom going, Oh, please God make my system go bigger. It's like, all right, then we'll give you COVID. And it That's just right. changed the world in terms of, I've talked to realtors that have taken their cell phone on uh, Facebook Messenger and walked around the rooms with their phone. And the person, no, no, go back to the closet. I want to see that. And people oh, sure. have purchased a home with basically live feed from the, the agent. And they trusted them, the agent and that allowed them to say, yes, I want to buy it. Let's make it happen. That's right. Yeah, and it, and you know what? It's it's really worked well. And if you'd said that to somebody five or six years ago, they would have thought you were crazy. Definitely, yeah. my hometown boy. I used to live in Baltimore. Is Tom Clancy the author? Right. Okay. Jack Ryan stuff, and he's got this one quote that I love. It's uh, the problem with fiction. Unlike reality, fiction has to be believable. <laughs> and had somebody said, you know, oh, you just walk your phone around, people will buy it. It's like that will never happen. I, what are you nuts? And of course, uh, amazing things happen in in the real world. That's right. Yeah, it it's been really cool. You know, Zoom, FaceTime, all that stuff has been like incredible. What we're we doing right now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, prior life, you know, I would be on a train into Toronto. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's so bizarre now. You don't have to do that. and But you still have the connection. So it's really good. So I'm a really savvy tech guy. And I did this. Uh, I've got this amazing workshop that's breathtaking. And one of the people there said, you know, Umar, you could do this virtually. Like, just record it and just have that. And my initial reaction was, you have no understanding of how amazing I am and my connection with the people. And then uh, it kind of annoyed me. And the next morning when I woke up, it was like, no, oh, that's a really good idea, actually. But the initial reaction was, I'm special in some way, being in my presence. But the reality is, no, we live in a different world and people absorb information differently. And the thing that slows us down is that uh, the human ego that I had when he first suggested it. We all have that, though. We all yeah. have to get we all have to correct ourselves every once in a while. There's this uh, thing, it's called computer in the wall. I'm not sure if you ever came across this, but it was in India. It was a computer software company. They're on the edge of a slum. So they got all, they're walled off. And uh, people that live in the slum, especially the kids, are illiterate. So one guy gets, uh, what would happen if we put a computer that the kids could see? The, the mouse would be there, the keyboard and the screen. And we wouldn't let them access the computer, but they could interact with it. And so we just put up the computer, no instructions. And a bunch of kids are walking by, they see the computer and it's like, the hell's this? And they poke on it a little bit. And then there's one guy poking on it and doing shit. And people behind him that don't know what the hell they're doing because they've never seen a computer are suggesting things. Hey, you idiot, go up, push it up, do this. And within like two weeks, these kids are speaking English and they're using the computer and they're surfing and it's just uh, self-taught just by wow. giving them access to a computer. So yeah, if we just uh, give the technology to people, they'll figure out cool shit to do with it. Yeah, exactly. That's very cool. So uh, a few questions for you before we part company. Number one, what are you learning right now to uh, manifest a better version of you? A better <laughs> leader, a better realtor, a better human being? What are you playing uh, with? 
well, I, I knew this was obviously set up this meeting. So I've been kind of thinking about it yesterday, I had a horrible day, what I would call a horrible day. You know, you get down on yourself, you have a challenging thing going on yeah. at work. You're just like, Oh my God. And so last night I actually went, um, my one daughter was going away for a night to her aunts. And so I went and had ice cream with her first. And then I'm like, I had to go take a mower. We got some property we helped take care of. So I'm going to go take the mower and I'm just going to go cut grass for a couple hours. And I was going around in circles and circles and cutting lawn. And I'm like thinking about the day and how bad it had been and stuff like that. I said, you know, what? it's time to finish this pity party. Like, you know what? You got to nice. just switch your mindset and, you know, get your pants back on and get figuring stuff out. And it's easy to wallow, but you got to manifest a positive vibe, right? Because that's uh, that's where it's at. If if you're bummed out all the time, nothing good is going to happen. Um, Absolutely. Keep moving and, forward. So I was living in the states before I uh, you know came here for a visit. Uh, so I might do this. I could do this. I'm almost an American. If I put a gun to your head right now and I said, list a hundred things you're grateful for. The initial thought would be, oh, I can't do that. But you'd come up with 100. If I said 200, you come up with 200. Everybody has so many things to be grateful for, like the glasses on your face that allow you to see. Right. Uh, yes. having, uh, yeah. oh my amazing God, I golden get... retriever. Yeah. yeah. I look more handsome. When you take off the glasses, I look more handsome. Just, just saying. So, yeah, it's like uh, we can choose to focus on the negative or choose to see the blessings we have. That's so right. I sold my house last year in May and went on a quest. And the quest was, what am I going to do for the next 30 years of my life? And what came up on the first five weeks of the quest, I went to Greece, was, oh my God, life is all about happiness. What if we help people be happier? Uh, and the whole idea was, and I'll get you to send me a video, uh, if you could, uh, Todd, is a video that says, hi, my name's Todd. What makes me happy is, and whatever it is, having ice cream with my daughter or whatever it is, <laughs> and send it back to me, uh, uh, you know, just text it over to me. Right. And we've collected a ton of these videos and nobody has ever said, you know, when I get this $50 million company and I have this super gorgeous wife and, and none of that shit, it's always the laughter of my grandkids. The first person I asked was an Uber driver. And he said, uh, I work 12 hours a day driving Uber. When I go home at night, I take my eight-year-old son and my wife, and we walk by the Mediterranean. That makes me happy. So everything anybody said was simple, attainable, doable by anyone. And I think that's what we need to focus on. Yeah, the I positive, not the negative. Yeah. Don't yeah, ignore yeah. the negative. We can solve yeah. that. But if you wallow yeah. in it, then solutions are few and far between. You got to get out of that funk. Yeah, but absolutely. In, in sales, it's, it's paramount, right? You can't, you can't sit in a bad mood. Um, it'll just destroy you. So and what happens is when you sit in a bad mood, uh, you're feeling bad. And then you take on the bad physiology mm -hmm. and that deepens the feeling and that invokes negative thoughts, which invoke worse feelings and worse posture. And before you know it, you're in a spiral and uh, it's hard to get out of. And all you need to do is do something. This is what I recommend people do. And I'd like you to do it right now, Todd. Are you ready? I'm ready. I want you to hold your breath for three seconds. And the reason I say breath is that's the one thing you control in the entire world that you can do right now. You could hold your breath for three seconds, or you could take a deep breath in, or you could let it out slowly. And just that one thing to say, I can control something. What else can I control? That's I can a good play with my dog. Yeah, isn't it? There's just that yeah. uh, breath is so important. So I'm going to tell you something totally genius. So I have noticed that uh, there is one part of me that I'm not accessing where I could truly shine. And I've been thinking about it for a year now. What is that thing in here? I can't access it. I've removed a lot of the other blocks. And I came across this technique where you use breath to get at what's deep down below the unconscious. And I've been playing with that for about a week now. And it is like a revolutionary. You don't have to think about it. Don't have to remember anything. But the thing I want to share with people is there's a thousand ways to get to San Francisco. If that's what you want is to be a better version of yourself, it doesn't need to be using this methodology or that or the other. Just find what's right for you and just go for it and you will get there, my friends. Todd, last question. What's one technique or one tool you use to make yourself better, happier, stronger, sexier? Like what's the one piece of advice you want to share with the world? Smile. Totally genius. It's simple. And that's, okay, I lied. It's not just your breath. You can also smile. 
<laughs> so we got two things. Todd, thank you so much for being on the program. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming, and that is the fastest way to get better results. 